written language come from? And for that matter, all of the Romance languages, French, Italian, etc. Some people believe that it had its birth in present day Romania through an extinct language called Dacian, a pre-Roman language. And some people believe that Romanian today is a continuation of Dacian. Well, thankfully, because Latin has gone through, or did go through rather, several stages, major changes. It's easy to prove one way or the other by comparing these stages with the Romanian language. So, this is Benjamin. We're going to get to the bottom of this matter in this video. This video is going to be in four parts. First, Latin had different stages in its history. What are they? We'll look at those, how the language grew out of Indo-European and then going into a fossilized version of itself. Second, what are the two oldest texts in Latin and Romanian that have survived? Because we can use these flashpoints in history to help us decide which grew out of which. Then, we're going to look at 10 words from Classical Latin, how they changed into Vulgar Latin, and see where the Romanian language fits into that time frame. Because if most of these words in Romanian clearly come from a later stage of Latin, well, it didn't give birth to Latin, did it? And then just briefly, there's two major branches of the Romance languages, actually. There's the Eastern Romance languages, of which Romanian is the biggest and main language spoken, but there are some others. And there's the Western Romance languages, French, Portuguese, Catalan, Italian, etc. Sometime before 2500 BCE, that's a long time ago. Indo-European in, in Europe began to break up. And it broke up in several branches, which then broke off again later. And one of these was Italo-Celtic. Meaning that the Romance languages and the Celtic languages are much closer to each other than Celtic languages and Germanic. Or Italic languages and Slavic. And what this created around the Alps region, we can see from place names, it created a Sprachbund, meaning a linguistic area where languages converge and diffuse together. And it appears we cannot be wholly sure that the peoples who would become the Latins, the Italic languages, moved south through the Alps, not from the east but from the north. Now granted, centuries later they would have come from the east. But by the time Latin was forming, they had shared a cultural and linguistic heritage with Celts. Not in the east, but in the north and in the west. And so they moved into Italy, and Proto-Italic began. This is before Latin. The core of this period is around 1,000, but, you know, give or take. And this broke into latino Faliscan and osco umbrian And eventually this would create four different languages with a few other small ones. So what we have here already is that Latin didn't start in the Italic Peninsula as Latin, okay? It gradually grew into Latin and taking different influences, especially Oscan and Faliscan, from fellow Latin languages, and then a bit from Etruscan. See my video on Etruscan, a non-Indo-European language that was spoken in the Italian peninsula. From the seventh century, you get Old Latin, and we get inscriptions from this point forward, we see writing in the language and the beginnings of what we know happened more. 
This goes all the way up until 75 BC, so I mean most of seven centuries here. And it's changing through this time. The inscriptions change. But around this time, from 75 BC, you get a clear divergence. Senators and Roman aristocracy, the older gentlemen, wanting to keep this glorious vestige of the Latin, the old Latin, but they're refining it to make it fair for them to write in and eloquent in their view of what beauty is. But the common people are not speaking this way. They're speaking what's becoming called vulgar Latin. Now classical Latin really only holds on for about three centuries in that antiquity period, the height really of the Roman Empire, what was becoming it. Vulgar Latin spreads. It's the common popular tongue. And out of this, the Romance languages come up through the soil between them, between these patois. So those are the stages of spoken Latin. What about the oldest written text in Latin and the oldest one written in Romanian? The oldest written text in Latin is the premise to fibula. Now, fibula, this is a brooch, like a decoration that you'd put on a cloak or a robe that you're wearing to hold the cloth together, but they'd also have a bit of personalization. It was very stylish for, well, most of the Middle Ages and before. People would give gifts with inscriptions on them. And in the early 7th century, we have one of these brooches appear from a burial site near Rome, from Palestrina, 35 kilometers east of Rome, in the early 7th century. Just to keep in mind, this inscription is right to left, like Hebrew and some ancient Greek. This is very old. But here's what it says. Manios med fafaket numasio, meaning Manios made me for numerius. Now that's written in old Latin, but if you update it to late classical to vulgar Latin, it would be like this: Manius me facit numerio, and in Romanian, Manius ma facut pentru. Numeria. That's quite different. It's not wholly different, mind, but the middle part of that has dropped out. Now, that's just one text, so let's look at the earliest Romanian. In the 6th century, there was an Eastern Roman Empire campaign. A military campaign into the Northern Balkans. And Theophanes the Confessor, this guy, recorded the first words, which may be attributed to the Romanian language, in 587. He says, Torna, torna, frate. And in modern Romanian, this would be, Intorcete, intorcete, frate. That's quite similar. It's been elongated but it's not that different. And yet from these two texts, the earliest Latin and the earliest Romanian, we can't make any choice one way or the other, but it does look already that Romanian emerged out of vulgar Latin, but let's find some more evidence as to where this change took place. What happened? So here are 10 words from classical Latin going into vulgar Latin. If most of these words, these are very basic everyday words, if most of them clearly come from a later stage in Latin, 
than clearly Romanian comes from Latin. The first one, bird. In classical, avis. And in vulgar, you had two options, okeios and pesaros. And this gave birth to different sources that Romance languages chose to take from. So French, l'oiseau, clearly came from okeros. But Spanish comes from pesare, pajaro. And in Spanish, you also get el ave, which that comes from the earlier Latin. But in Romanian, you get this pesare root, which meant sparrow originally. O pesare. Okay, you could make the argument that Latin took the word for sparrow. So let's try another one. To touch. In classical, tingere. And then in vulgar Latin, toccare from Germanic, which gave French touche. But in Romanian, attingere. So Romanian here actually has the older word. That's interesting. So does it mean that Romanian gave birth to Latin? Well, let's look at a few more of these. To eat. Classical Latin, esse. Vulgar Latin, manducare, comedere. Spanish took one of these two, comer. But French and Romanian took it from manducare. French, manger. Romanian, munca. That's clearly a case of different vulgar Latin peoples creating a new Romance language from Latin. But let's keep going. To speak, classical Latin, loci. In vulgar, you had competing forms for parabolare and fabulare. In Italian, parlare. But in Romanian, you get this, vorbi. That's not like any of them. Where does that come from? It comes from another Latin root, vorbum, which is the word for word, vorbum. And the competition for that in vulgar Latin was parabola, but Romanian didn't take this. I mean, you have Portuguese, una palavra, and Catalan, una paraula, but Romanian, verba. So what happened here? Well, because the verb is vorbi, and the verb in Romance and Indo-European languages generally tends to come from a noun. Not always, but that tends to be the case. It looks like what happened here is we had an earlier word from Latin come in to Romanian, which then later gave us the verb to speak in Latin. Now, that's not evidence in itself, but but we are seeing a trend here that Romanian words form out of Latin roots. And because it's not clear evidence, we, we need to keep going, even though it's indicative already. What's the word for stone? I mean, that's a basic word, right? In classical Latin, saxum. But then petro was taken from Greek into Latin, which gives us French, un pierre. And for Romanian, O piatre, shirt. Classical Latin, tunica, which would later give tunic. But in vulgar Latin, camisia. This was either from Gaulish or Germanic. But French, chemise. And Romanian, kumasha. I think that Romanian word is quite beautiful. Kumasha. But it's clearly from vulgar Latin. There's no disputing that one. So it really is looking like Romanian came from Bulgar Latin, but still, let's give it more of a shot, right? Old is one of the basic words that hangs on really long in a language. So what's the word for old? In classical Latin, vetus. In Vulgar Latin, it became veclus. And this C replaced the T. In Italian, vecchio. And in Romanian, vecchi. So this has that C change. <laughs> that wasn't really a pun, but we'll take it. 
and you see this across the other Romance languages. So you had that L in there, and like French, vieille, that took the L bit. So all of the Romance languages are taking the later stage of this, because that then came from an older version within Latin. If Dacian produced Romanian, which then produced Latin, you wouldn't expect to see that change or to see it change in that way. Horse. In classical Latin, equus or equos. But this cabalus was taken, meaning like a cart horse, a workhorse. And in French, cheval, Romanian. Cow. So this clearly comes from vulgar Latin, again, a later stage of Latin. Let's look at a really core word, from. This is one of the last things to change in a language, the word for from. In classical Latin, this was our ab, but in vulgar, you had the de come in, like de la France, from France. And look at these. Romanian, de, or din, French, Catalan, Portuguese, Spanish, all de. Only Italian has di or da. And what does this tell us? The fact that all of these peripheral Romance languages that bloomed up have this de in them. And only Italian has this di and da as opposed to that. That means it's a similar sound and it was changing, but Italian was the one to change last, or rather, to keep most of the core of whatever was there before. Which means, yeah, you have this Dean bit in Romanian, but it wasn't the last to change. And that means the core of the language did not come from Romania, yeah? I've just shown you this list because it's really basic. It's really easy to prove that Dacian did not produce Latin in the Romance languages. All you have to do is look at the different stages of Latin and compare them with Romanian. Latin is the language that gave birth to Romanian not the other way around. So let's look briefly at Eastern and Western Romance. One thing that Eastern Romance languages share is they change the ending S in Latin to an I or an E sound. This didn't quite happen in the West in the same way. And this shows us that there's a Sprachbund. Remember what I said about that? An area of linguistic convergence and diffusion influencing one another. And this continued when you have the article the, which in the West, it's le la el, all of that in the West. But in the East, you attach the to the end of the word, like Dracula comes from Draculaea, the, the son of the evil one, basically, the son of the dragon, the son of the devil. Drac, ul, ea. And this suggests a substrate was already existent before Latin across the Balkan region that was not similar to the underlayer in the West. There's a reason why these languages then didn't have a case system, like Romanian does have a case system. Basically, the object and subject change according to where they are in the sentence you add bits on, basically. The West, you don't have that. And this, again, reinforces that there was already a difference between Italia and the greater West, where there was Italo-Celtic, and the East, where there was something else. And it's unfortunate that we don't know exactly what Dacian was. I wish we did. It would be beautiful to have more linguistic diversity. But that's been lost. And I'm just going to say to those people who 
believe that Dacian gave birth to Latin, which then gave birth to Romanian. It's just not true. I'm sorry. If you've come into contact with Romanian, what do you find beautiful about it? What's enchanting? What makes it a beautiful language? If you haven't come into contact with Romanian, what's your initial impression about the language? Let me know down in the comments. And Diochen Varian, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you to my Patreons.